Hello, welcome to Canterbury Live on this beautiful Wednesday. I'm Andrea Allen and it's wonderful to have you with me today. It's lovely to have the sunshine. The children, of course, have three days left of the school holiday so they can actually finally get out and enjoy it. Now, talking about getting out and enjoy it, you've got two days left to win five double passes to see Chris Christopherson here in Canterbury. It will be drawn tomorrow at 4.30 on Canterbury Live. So what you need to do is get on the phone and call Mary Ann on 03 377 That's 03 377 Good luck, get in there, and I look forward to drawing those five double passes tomorrow. Now on the show today, we cover many bases. We are landscaping with Richard from Area Landscapes, and we're hitting the water with the Coast Guard. They've got their appeal coming up, so we would lovely to talk to them. But first up on the show, we have an amazing woman. She is a fashion designer, she's a mum, she's a partner, she is a mentor. I have the lovely Anna Stretton here with me on Canterbury Live. Welcome Anna. Welcome Lois. <laughs> hey, it's great to be here, a little colder than I'm used to but... Um, We're just talking about that. I know, I know, but I am coping. Oh good on you. Now today of course we're hanging up the fashion hat. Yeah, well, I don't know if I've ever entirely worn it. I more see myself more about being in the a business of fashion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, we can hang it up. We oh, can hang cool. it up. Because you have been behind an amazing organisation, Raw. Can you explain to us at home? Oh, that's a big story. But I've late last year I set up a foundation, um, which is the Anna Stretton Foundation, and it was simply about taking some of the profits that the clothing company generates, putting it into the foundation, and looking at some initiatives that I could work with um, from that. So Raw is the the first initiative so um, it's wonderful to actually initiate something and, mm. and sort of set the ground rules set the vision um, employ the people and make it happen so RAW is all about reclaiming another woman so R-A-W it's an acronym and I suppose in its simplest state it's just one woman like my <clears throat> one woman like myself mm. walking alongside another woman that's been a victim of domestic violence and endeavouring to change the outcomes for her through education so that's kind of the simple synopsis on it. But education is the key though, isn't it? It's absolutely the key. You know, if you educate, um, I think if we educate the woman, they become the game changers and then behind them are the children. So once again, they'll set the precedent on how you should be living your life, what you should be doing, um, the environments that you should be um, working, playing, living in, the behaviours. So how are you finding these women? I mean, they must be uh, well, we were very aligned, Initially we were aligned, the pilot was in the Waikato and we were initially aligned with refuge in the mm. Waikato, so the Te Whakarudu Hau, I hope I've said that right. My it's Maori. beautiful. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> refuge. Um, so we're aligned with refuge. Um, whilst we're not part of refuge, that alignment is very important because they do an awesome job, um, you know, getting the woman out of difficult situations, stabilising them, and then from there we'll work with women to actually take them further. So I suppose in the past, refuge has had a lot of difficulty wants the woman are ready to go back um, mm -hmm. actually getting any real change and that's because the women go back to the situations they know and feel comfortable in so we're saying okay let's draw a line and say we see you from now um, and look let's look at the opportunities that might exist if we find someone to walk alongside you so that person has to be that significant other and has to have a very different life to the woman that they're actually going to mentor so you know it, it's 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 a it's, it's not a complicated model but I suppose mm -hmm. it does rely on um, capability Ability, education, um, someone that's really looking at opportunities, someone that's prepared to show that tough love, someone that's prepared to drive forward and really get this woman believing in herself. So it's not so much in that volunteer space anymore. No. It's really in that sort of, you know, you are the mentor, you are the significant other, you, are, you know, we need to get change for these women and we need to get change for this country as well. Absolutely, we really and it's a responsibility. You yeah. can't enter it. No, with no, half you can't. Heart. And we, it's, it, what we say is it's an hour a week where mm. you connect um, with the woman, um, but most women are doing way more than that. And it's not one sided. You know, I love the work that I'm doing with my mentoree. I think that's a, an official term now. <laughs> um, but, you know, we suggest that they will at least need to commit for a year, but most women, I think, will commit for a lifetime. You know, I, I know that my mentoree, Crystal, will be in my life um, for most of my life, for the rest of my life. She's almost become like a daughter. And easily would because you're so passionate about it. So why wouldn't oh, you treat it like a Yeah, you're going to have to stop me talking because I can wax lyrical about law because uh, raw, law, raw. Um, <laughs> we've you know we've got 70 women matched on the program. We've only been going for six weeks now. That's you know, if you bring incredible. a business model um, yeah. to this type of environment and say, okay, how can we make this work? How can we get change? You know, what do we need to do um, and to work in an environment that's been ostensibly quite difficult to get change in? You know, for these women. And how are you finding the women though? Are they coming to um, you? 
going it's, towards? It, that's the question everyone asks me. Yeah. I've got more mentors than I can cope with, so it's really easy to get the what mentors. A luxury. So you know, the uh, women like myself want to be involved. It's just one woman walking alongside another woman. You know, we want this change. We really want to make this change. Um, it's been more difficult to actually get the women that are in the domestic violence situations mm. to come forward, and especially um, Pakeha women, um, because there is still that stigma around. You know, and they, you know, this, I suppose, there's that stigma around failure. It hasn't worked. Um, mm. You know, I don't really want to go out and, and start to face those demons, um, make those changes. Change is hard. Change is really hard. And um, and we're also not just working with refuge. I think that's important to know too. You don't have to be in refuge to be part of RAW. Um, but it's certainly been a good starting point for us. I mean, and that those women have been stabilised and they're in a good headspace to right. actually come in to, a, to the RAW model and, and want to make change. And that's the, that's the whole point. They well, you need to make change. To want yeah, to make you've a got change. to be in that space to yeah. want to make changes. It's yeah. a waste of time. So that's why Refuge has been such a wonderful platform. But it has also been difficult for some women to get their head around because they're kind of saying, well, you know, I'm not in Refuge or I'm not looking at going to Refuge. Will I fit raw? You know, if you are part, if, if you are in that space um, where you, uh, you know, that your life is difficult because of mm. domestic violence, and that can be verbal as well, um, you should consider talking to us. And you know, if you're in that space that you really want to make a change to your life um, with that significant other. So it's someone like myself um, that will walk alongside another person to actually get them into a space that they should be in. You know, everybody should live a life they love. Everybody. Oh, you know, absolutely. we're on this planet for such a damn short time. So, you know, I'm out there now wanting to get this change for women. It's fantastic. And simply going to the raw.org.nz website, yeah, can absolutely. we find it's out? It's as easy as that, you know, yeah. raw.org.nz. Um, and there's, there's a tab there that says be supported or give support. So we've used those terms just to make it easy, which they could not they could say mentor or mentoree, <laughs> but that all became a bit difficult, who's what and, and how does that work. So give support or be supported um, and, you, and just come in and talk to us. That's all you've got to do, you know. I mean, it doesn't commit you. It just enters you into some conversation that may yeah. change your life. And we We've, you know, we've changed so many women's pathways. It is so exciting. Thank you, Anna. You oh, are thank inspirational. You. I know you are a very motivated woman, but I hope it actually has motivated some woman out there to make contact with your organisation. Oh, so thank look, you for your time. Thank you for the opportunity. That's fine. No problem at all. Now, after the break, we're landscaping something completely different. Be watching CTV News first at five and you could win up to $5,000 every week with CTV's cash giveaways. For more information, visit our website and be watching CTV News first at five. Hi, I'm Mark and welcome to Stay Well Pharmacy. Whatever the season, Stay Well Pharmacy has you covered. As an integrated pharmacy, we stock all the well-known pharmacy medicines as well as quality nutritional and herbal treatments. Our team of pharmacists and full-time naturopath are here to help you find the products and advice to suit the needs of you and your family. So come in and see us at Stay Well Pharmacy, 27 Shands Road in Hornby. Stay Well Pharmacy, live well, stay well. Ready to go, mate? Flight leaves at 4.30. Relax, mate. We'll park at Airpark Canterbury. Airpark Canterbury, privately owned and operated with a free 24-7 shuttle service. Call 0800 Airpark or book online at airparkcanterbury.co.nz. Action Removals, offering short or long-term storage facilities, full packing services, comprehensive rates, all fully insured and with six vehicle sizes to choose from. Earthquake repairs, Action Removals, pack, move, store and return your valuable possessions stress-free. Action Removals, a family business that has been operating in Christchurch for over 10 years. Action Removals, your one-stop removal service on time, every time. 0800 222 526. With so many car fans in the region, Canterbury Christian Funeral Service have been asked very often if they had an enthusiast hearse. So, they bought one. The Ford Galaxy is a custom-built hearse for those who want their last journey to be a memorable one. Complete with racing motor and exhausts, the vehicle certainly stands out and if you want to go out in something that's very different or you want your loved one to have their last journey very special, contact the team at Canterbury Christian Funeral Services. Have you seen something you like? You can purchase a copy of CTV's own shows so you can watch them again and again. So give us a call on 3777-033 and order a copy today.
welcome back to Canterbury Live. And I'm joined by Richard Allison. Richard, pretty exciting landscaping. It and is. It's, it's, you live and breathe it. And I'm very excited to hear about for the next 10 Mondays, starting the 5th of May, we'll be actually seeing uh, a new land, well, a landscape project actually evolve in front of us. Yeah, I guess um, in Christchurch at the moment, there's a lot of landscaping going on, especially, you know, after the earthquakes and the, and the rebuilds. And, um, you know, we've been privileged enough to have the, the people from CTV come out and film us on, on site and um, people can see a progressive landscape working through. Um, through from paving, decking, planting plants, um, how to irrigation, right. um, all different aspects of uh, landscaping will be shot. How tremendous. So 10 segments over the next 10 weeks. Every Monday we will get opportunity to see what fantastic work you do at Area Landscapes. Now, who actually supplies you all your goods? Uh, we get our supplies from Garden Makers down on Parkhouse Road. Trusted team down there. Um, really good. And that's uh, huge when uh, doing landscaping at the size that we are. And also they do a lot of private stuff. Free trailer hire for um, people who want to go down there. We punt for them. Right. Um, yeah. So that's garden makers. That's garden makers. Fantastic. So a very important team behind your team. Yes. <laughs> so how do you decide you've built a home or you may have an existing home and you're thinking about landscaping, what should you do first? Uh, first, first of all, find someone you can trust, a landscape architect, and that might mean shopping around. Uh, we do a lot of work with exterior uh, landscapes, um, architecture, uh, then get a budget and find out <laughs> your budget. Not the budget at the end. Uh, not the budget, at, yeah, yeah find, something, find something that you can, is going to be viable for you to work with. A lot of people do get a lot of shocks in landscaping. We say to people, expect 10% of your build to become your landscape. Um, that includes everything, driveways and decks. And once you've found yourself a trusted landscape architect, it goes about putting into place all the, all the um, outdoor living that you require, whether it be um, positioning your deck in the right place, uh, whether you want paving over wood, mm. um, your entry into your house. As, you know, as, as Kiwis, we tend to go a lot for DIY. Yeah. And we try and recommend people to stay away from DIY. Um, do it properly, you know, put, put in your own gardens, that's cool. But when it comes to the, the larger stuff, stick with, the, yeah, stick, stick with the professionals, <laughs> might help, you know, and uh, save yourself a lot of money having to come in and have it fixed. And what's the common mistakes people make, Richard? Uh, going for cheap rather than quality. That, that would be, I would say that, not to knock Kiwis, because I'm a pretty proud Kiwi, <laughs> but um, I think we uh, like to keep our wallets tight in our pockets. Um, <clears throat> yeah, find someone you can trust. That's the main thing, finding someone you can trust over the top of price and take your time. You know, start looking for your landscape at the start of your build mm -hmm. rather than rushing into it at the end of your build and then be prepared. So you have a price in front of you on the table. Right. Um, you are then subject to make changes all the way through the building. You get to see where the sun comes up. You get to see where the rain is. You get to see where... Your, your guests are going to sit, um, you know, all, all those different aspects that people don't take into place. Yeah. Your washing line area, you know, vegetable gardens, are, are, you know, are you just doing it for the sake of doing it or, or have you been guided in the right direction, which is huge. Yeah. So what's hot in landscaping what's at the moment? What's hot in landscaping? Well, I was pre-prepared for this, what's <laughs> hot in landscaping? And, uh, outdoor living, the, the small cafe setting, so, uh, Instead of just putting a deck and under a uh, deck that's not covered, now um, running a like a large gable off your house over top of your deck, um, fire pits in the middle of your decks, um, oh. gas fires, outdoor fires still, um, yeah, deck cafe setting, outdoor furniture, couches with cushions, sort of taking everything outside, but being blocked off from all the all the elements that you know can be thrown at you. Um, also, private little courtyard areas. A lot of people tend to go, you know, at the moment we, we have large master bedrooms leading right. off onto a deck and, and a bit of decorative fencing around there and privatising that. Great, so back to the 10 segments we're going to have over the next 10 weeks, which is pretty exciting to see from a raw um, through to the actual finished product. <laughs> what are we going to learn by actually watching the series? 
I don't know about the word exciting, more nerve-wracking mm. than it should be. Um, <laughs> well, exciting for the owner, I guess. Yeah, yeah it could be exciting for mm. the owner. I think yeah. um, they can see the landscape project evolving. They can also see products going down that they may choose that they like and, or that they haven't seen or haven't thought of. And that, that to me, is the big thing when, when clients or um, prospective clients mm. watch... What, what is happening, and they can think, well, we didn't think about having that product. And uh, then they can always relate back, can't they? And, and, and it's opening up someone's mind to more than one option. So over the 10 weeks, um, <coughs> watching... Yeah. Excellent. Cool. No, it's great. Thanks, Richard. <laughs> well, you are the man to be trusted, so make sure you do call Richard and the team. Now, after the break, we catch up with Coast Guard New Zealand. <laughs> CTV News and Weather, first at five. Be the first to find out about the rebuild, local politics, business, sports, culture and community. CTV News and Weather, first at five, only on CTV. Flash News 7 at Red and Black Sport gets a new title as well, but we'll still be talking every week to the movers and shakers in sport. Red and Black Sport, Monday night, 7.30, here on CTV. Hurst Auto Dismantlers, your one-stop shop for all your mechanical and car part needs. Our huge premises boasts a large selection of mechanical parts, panels, tyres and glass. Most makes and models are available on site, and if we don't have it, our trusted staff will do their best to source what you need locally and nationwide. So come in and see the team, or just give us a call and save time and money. Hurst Auto Dismantlers, 343 0099. Christchurch has its very own enchanted utopia. The Hitching Post, pop in and see for yourself. A magical assortment of handmade creations, custom made candles and artwork. Choose from our huge range of water features, garden art and imported giftware. Specialists in handcrafted metal artwork made in store. Nestled on 722 Marshlands Road. The Hitching Post, defining art our way. Hi, I'm Steve and welcome to Carpet Kingdom. At Carpet Kingdom we stock a massive range of carpets and we're also the largest vinyl stockers in the South Island. And not only do we have an excellent range in store, but you can purchase our stock online. We offer free measure and quotes, we have our own installation team, we ship nationwide, so come on down and see us at Carpet Kingdom. 312 Wilson's Road in Waltham, just off Brougham Street, or visit us online at carpetkingdom.co.nz. Hi, right, Rob Coat Williams. Join me with Rob's Country every Friday at 7.30 in the evening when I take you out of town and talk about anything this country. Rob's Country, Friday at 7.30. Well, welcome back to Canterbury Live. From one landscape to another, we're hitting the water with Coast Guard New Zealand. Hello, ladies. Hi. <laughs> so I'm joined by Cheryl Moffat and Heather McDonald from Coast Guard. Now, Coast Guard, well, it's been of late. We've heard a lot about the Coast Guard, unfortunately. Mm. And unfortunately, it's only ever really when we really need you. Would yeah. that be a good assumption? Yes, well, I suppose people don't think about emergency services until they get into trouble, but we're hoping that people will think about um, Coast Guard over the next month because tomorrow is the beginning of our May Day appeal on the 1st of May. Well, let's talk about May Day. What, mm. what is, tell us about the whole concept. <laughs> this, is, this is your bit. This is my bit. Okay. Um, it, it basically, what we're trying asking people to do this year is to give us an hour of their pay. People like Heather, who are a volunteer, mm. give on average of about 127 hours a year to um, train and to do rescues and, and do all the other things that make a Coast Guard unit work. And so we thought it might be cool if we ask people if they can give an hour's pay um, to us to help fund the things that the Coast Guard volunteers need in their training. Right. How do we make that happen though? Well you just need to go to um, ourforcoastguard.co.nz and it's all 
words, no numbers, our for coastguard.co.nz and then you can make a donation of an hour's pay. What a neat idea. Yeah, not very much to ask. No, not really at all, is it really? <laughs> uh, well, maybe Mr John Key could... Uh... Oh, mind well, an hour of his um, wage won't be too bad, <laughs> would it? Our lovely Mia has promised that she's going to give us an hour of her pay, so we'd like some other people to oh. perhaps match that. Go Leanne! <laughs> yeah. That is really neat, isn't it? Fantastic. Mm. So after this appeal, what is that money going towards? Uh, one of the capital projects that we've got on is um, a, a boat for Bluff, a new lifeboat. So um, we've raised a million dollars in the community down there, and um, they're getting a new a new lifeboat. So yeah, that's tremendous. And the other funding, and, and a lot of the money is going to go towards um, training costs for volunteers. That must be an ongoing thing, though. Yeah, surely. there's a lot of ongoing running costs, um, getting equipment for the the volunteers, like you know, life jackets and, and wetsuits and wet weather gear and stuff to keep them warm and dry while they're, they're out on the water, um, as well as running the boats and maintaining them and yeah. And education? Yes. Um, well, we the education for our volunteers. Mm. Yeah, the, there is a whole. Um, training program that our volunteers need to go through to get their certificate of competency and there's three levels of training there's um, our operational senior operational and master and Heather is holds this master certificate and Yay. you also do quite Not a bit mistress. of training. <laughs> master. <laughs> no. Okay, just making it accurate. Master of a vessel, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, that's great. And so when we support the appeal, what can we see happening within our community? If we want to actually see exactly, you know, we may not be out in a boat, mm. but we might, might actually like to see exactly what you do. How can we do that? Well, you could um, get in touch with your local Coast Guard unit. If you go to our website, coastguard.co.nz, you can see all the units. We have 16 in the southern region, which is most of the South Island. Um, or you could ring us at the regional office, and um, we're in the phone book. Um, and we can put you in touch with a unit. We're always looking for new people to volunteer. And you don't have to just do volunteer jobs on the water. You could be a secretary, a treasurer. You could help with um, fundraising and all sorts of other things. You're always needing. Communications, yep. yeah. Communications, Communications is really important. Involve? So we've got a radio room at our, our building, and a lot of the units do. Um, or a lot of the units just might have a mobile, like a, a, a vehicle with radios in them so that we can talk to the people on the boat can talk to someone on land and keep yeah. them informed of what's going on and get information back and forth. Yeah. So how young or old can you be to be a volunteer? You could join at 16 but you can't go to sea and become operational till you're 18. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a huge amount of on water experience, it's probably helpful isn't it Heather? But yeah I had very little when I first joined so um, we can teach you pretty much everything you need to know when you join up. Yeah. I guess the, the key factor is you've got a love and a passion to, to help people. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's pretty much um, potentially being available 24-7 to um, drop what you're doing and jump on a boat or jump in the comms room or you know help us to launch the boat and things like that. Yeah, yeah so it's not always about being in the water, is it? No, no. Um, as I say, the communications is a really important one. We quite often get um, people who think they're going to join up and do the communications and then they go, oh, it's a boat, I want, I want to get on that. So um, we do a bit of rotation and, and people, you know, not everyone can be on the boat on a particular day, so some of those will do the, the radios on that day. But yeah. And it has a bit of a sexiness about it, hasn't it? The whole drama of the water. <laughs> I mean, they've made TV series about it, haven't they? Yes. About the whole Coast Guard thing and, you know, very entertaining as yeah. it is. But maybe each of you can explain to me why do you do it? Yeah I've got to say it's um, you know it's really nice to be able to you know help people and, and you know be there when people need you but um, it's also really good fun and you meet some really cool people like the the crew that I train with are, are great people and you know we train every Tuesday night and every second Sunday so you get to know them pretty well and um, uh, and you, got, you get to know them a little bit in a different way when the pager goes off. Um, you know, training's one thing, but when you, you know, when the thing beeps and you get a bit of adrenaline going, and you're kind of thinking, what are we going to do, and what is it, and what's happening, and yeah, it kind of tests you a little bit. But it's, it's <laughs> great, you know, find out what your boundaries great. are. <laughs> okay, well, you've been amazing, and I hope that the May Day appeal goes well. I think it's a fantastic thing. Go, Leanne, and I encourage other business persons also to do the same. So thank you very much. Okay. Well, now we head to the zoo. This is Keeper Michael with his favourite Zoo Junior. You can tell from the amount of care and love he's giving it. It's a sunbear cub. 
just three months old, and today it's being weighed. It's the 50th Sunbear cub to be born in Berlin's Animal Park. Unlike a human baby of the same age, which would lie on its back on the scales, this bundle of bear is precariously balanced. It weighs a healthy three kilos and will be weighed often to check on progress. The cub looks like a lovely cuddly teddy, but some bears are probably one of the most dangerous animals in Malaysia. They're naturally shy and nocturnal, so today's examination is a bit of a shock to the sun bear baby. Its mother Tina can be an overly attentive mum, so they check the cub for signs of nibbling. Its fur must be completely intact. Any holes or ball patches indicate too much love and possibly the need to remove the cub from mum. For now, the coat is in perfect condition. Michael is an experienced keeper, and the animal park has reared some bear cubs by hand before. But the keepers don't take a three-month-old cub away from its mother lightly. The emotional stress to both animals would be huge, and the workload for the keepers would not be easy. This cub needs a lot of love and attention. So until the next checkup, keeping mum and baby together is the best way to bring up a bear. It's cool here off my mom, eh? yeah. Michael knows how special this is. He's handled young animals for years. But the bear is distracted. The camera has caught its eye. Another strange experience in the world away from mum. It has to put its trust in Michael until it can get back to the safety of its cage. Returning the baby is handled with care. Michael mustn't stress Tina by rushing in without warning. Hello, Tina. Baby computer. He sweet talks Tina to let her know he's coming. It calms the cub too. He doesn't want a dramatic reunion. He puts the cub in a holding pen, settling it before he retreats to the main gate. Some bears are known for their intelligence, but this little one has a short memory. It's forgotten already Michael is friend, not foe. Some bears have been known to watch humans use keys and then unpick locks with a claw. Security is paramount. Once everything is secure, Michael can release the inner door to reunite cub and mum. Yeah.